How strong is Asura? Asura, or the Guardian General of Wrath, is an angry demigod whose power grows in response to his rage. He wants to get revenge on the self-proclaimed gods, and he will literally crawl out of hell to do it. Mantra, the power system in this verse, equivalent to Ki in Dragon Ball or Chakra in Naruto, can be manipulated through a mantra reactor, or by the priestess, and when it is amplified it is shown as green mist that can power machines, heal wounds, and even grant beings god-like power. Mantra is the cosmic energy produced by emotions either from the souls of mortals or from their prayers. There are eight forms of mantra within this verse that these characters derive their power from. Pride, lust, vanity, greed, violence, melancholy, sloth, and of course, wrath. These forms are the embodiment of human darkness and those who can draw its power from within the human soul can achieve limitless power. Asura fights against a creature named Vlitra which was created by Gaia or Earth because the cycle of life and death was disrupted by the souls not returning to her and instead being made into Mantra. Vlitra appears randomly becoming more and more powerful with each appearance with the demigods barely being able to defeat Vlitra each time. Vlitra being the literal will of the planet itself and its Mantra level being stated to be immeasurable. Asura is able to do fairly well against Vlitra on his own and with the help of the Karma Fortress or the Brahmastra, which is a machine that is made of pure mantra, they are able to force Vlitra to retreat. Asura is later framed for the death of the Emperor by the commander of the Guardian Generals, Deus. Deus betrayed Asura because his only daughter Mithra, or the Priestess, is able to manipulate and amplify mantra which the demigods derive their power from. Asura finds his wife murdered and his daughter kidnapped. And now he's on a rampage for revenge. Asura confronts Deus and is inevitably defeated and falls to Gaia in a fireball with his last words being, I will have my vengeance. Thus is the death of Asura. But it's not over. Asura wakes up and is confused about where he is. A golden spider tells him that he's in Naraka or hell and reminds Asura about what he said, about what he promised to do. Asura gains all of his memories back and begins his ascension out of hell, eventually reaching the top and breaking through returning to Gaia 12,000 years later. Asura's wrath is now stronger than ever after his revival, and he encounters Wizen, the guardian general of violence, who has become exponentially more powerful during the 12,000 years that Asura has been dead. Even stated multiple times that the demigod's power back then is nothing compared to what they can do now, even calling Asura a speck of dust in the past. However, Asura with sheer rage is able to completely dominate base Wizen, forcing him to use more transformations and put more of his power on display, eventually getting pushed to the point where he needed to take millions of souls, becoming Gongan Wizen. Wizen at this point is the size of the planet itself and is now using every last drop of mantra to defeat Asura, sending one finger down to the planet to crush him. But Asura's anger and hatred rises to the challenge, releasing all six of his arms to catch this attack. Asura is able to catch his finger and starts firing consecutive punches at Wizen, trying to push him back. After shattering all of his arms but one, Asura harnesses every last drop of mantra within his body and releases it in one final punch. This punch was so powerful that it was able to completely obliterate Wizen, erasing him from existence. This punch generated over seven Yoda tons of force, with a Yoda ton being equivalent to seven septillion tons of TNT, or enough to eviscerate the entire planet via its gravitational binding energy. Yasha confronts Asura immediately after Asura's win against Wizen and proceeds to dominate him, but we have to consider the fact that Asura has no arms and is heavily fatigued. Yasha proceeds to kill Asura, sending him back to hell where he would lay dormant for another 500 years. It's actually been confirmed in an interview with project leader Shaiji Shimoda and production head director Hiroshi Matsuyama that Wizen is the weakest of the seven deities. Asura wakes up in Naraka and a golden spider enlightens him once again and Asura breaks out of hell. Asura meets a girl who looks almost exactly like his daughter Mithra. Carlao, the guardian general of Sloth, proceeds to slaughter the girl's entire village to gain mantra, which is what the seven deities have been doing to get mantra for the past 12,000 years instead of getting it through prayers. Asura ends up defeating Carlao and the entire fleet of ships that were invading the village and he falls to Gaia. 
Asura wakes up in a hot spring with his previous master, August, who has been compared to Deus in strength, with multiple statements saying that he has only drawn his sword against Deus and that he might actually be stronger than him. However, the answer to these questions become more obvious as the story progresses. Asura and August have a full-fledged battle on the moon. Asura grows in strength as his rage increases, pushing August to draw his sword against another opponent for the first time. This sword releases August's full strength as he can manipulate the length of the sword, going as far as to push Asura to the earth from the moon. It's been stated in the guide that they were falling to the earth with the force of a falling comet, even stabbing Asura through the chest and even the entire planet itself. Asura is able to break this sword and end the battle with one final slash. Asura returns to the girl's village, but it is too late. Hundreds of bombs are falling from an armada of ships to the earth, launched by Olga, one of the seven deities, and completely nukes the entire village, killing everyone there, including the girl that looks like Mithra. This was the final push. Asura let his wrath go. Asura explodes with mantra, eviscerating multiple ships and destroying the landscape around him. And when the smoke clears, all that's left is wrath Asura. This transformation is the embodiment of Asura's wrath, and in this form he loses all sense of who he is, and his body carbonizes, becoming unstable due to the sheer amounts of mantra that Asura's wrath is producing. Asura releases multiple blasts at the fleet of ships in space and is able to destroy all of them, and even has the power to rival or even surpass the Brahmastra, which at this point has gained over 12,000 years worth of mantra to get to this level. Olga decides to use the Brahmastra to kill Asura, seeing him more as a threat than Vlitra, the creature with immeasurable amounts of mantra. The Brahmastra charges up its cannon and fires a blast at Asura, with Asura being able to react and charge up one of his own. Asura is able to temporarily match the power of the Brahmastra and eventually tank the attack, with the Brahmastra stated to be using three-fourths of its power to try and kill Asura, and Asura survived. The Karma Fortress of the Brahmastra's size is very contentious, in the actual game it is bigger than the Earth, however in the official game works it completely dwarfs the Earth in size, making it comparable to the Brahmastra's eye. The credibility of the official works is advocated for in an interview by production director Hiroshi Matsuyama and project leader Shaiji Shimoda, however the game adaptation of the Karma Fortress would be the most credible to use. Asura and Yasha fight again and Asura is able to defeat Asura, however we have to take into consideration that Asura is heavily fatigued after his fight with the Brahmastra and this form is killing him in general. Yasha goes to fight Deus and gets dominated until Asura wakes up and shows a new level of control by harnessing one of his wrath arms and teaming up with Yasha against Deus who is holding back. Deus fuses with the Karma Fortress itself to form Sakra Devanam Indra Deus, which actually increases the size of the Brahmastra with it now having an entire lower half. Asura and Yasha fly towards the Brahmastra. Deus tries to use the hands of the Brahmastra to clap them closed, which has actually been counted 33.881 Nina tons of TNT, or large planet level at a low ball. Going based off the size of the Brahmastra in comparison to Gaia, and accounting for the gaps of space within the Brahmastra itself, and of course the time it took Yasha's ship to reach the center of the Brahmastra, and other low ball presuppositions, it would be large planetary at a low ball, and dwarf star at a high ball. Asura and Yasha confront Deus and he finally uses his full power against them, and they get dominated. Deus heals and increases his power using Mithra, however this was a fatal mistake doing this in front of Asura. Asura bursts into a fit of rage and completely bodies Deus and eventually defeats him, ending his reign. Vlitra appears yet again more powerful than ever, with multiple heads. Asura and Yasha are able to defeat the heads and now head to the center of the earth to defeat Vlitra once and for all. They are both amped by Mithra and reach new levels of strength and are able to finally defeat Vlitra, bringing this story to an end. But it's not over yet. It is revealed that the Golden Spider was the one who bestowed Mantra unto their ancestors. He was the one who had the planet's will give birth to Vlitra. He is Chakravartin. He is God. Asura sees that he is the cause of all of his suffering and is the one that he needs to kill. Asura's wrath has now exploded seeing his daughter behind Chakravartin's webs and becomes the embodiment of wrath yet again and is able to break through the barrier however Mithra sends Asura and Yasha down to Gaia and Chakravartin says he will end this world and make it anew implying he is the creator of the entire universe itself. 
Yasha infuses the heart of the Brahmastra into Asura, which has accumulated seven trillion souls worth of mantra. Asura, with the help of his daughter, unlocks a new form which grows him to the size of the planet, similar to Wizen. And this transformation is called Asura the Destructor. Chakravartan fires a blast at Asura, which he's able to tank and protect the Earth from. In a guidebook, it is stated that Chakravartan is in the center of the Milky Way galaxy, and the galaxy itself is being absorbed into Chakravartan. This is shown with all these planets and stars being drawn toward him. The distance between Earth and the center of the Milky Way galaxy is 25,000 light years, and this beam takes 26 seconds to reach Asura. We can see that this beam is moving 30 billion times faster than light. Asura is able to react and dodge these beams multiple times while flying toward the creator, putting his speed massively faster than light plus. As Asura flies toward Chakravartan, he throws multiple planets and stars at him, confirming he is easily multi-star level and even gets a meteor the size of multiple galaxies thrown at him, which Asura is able to punch straight through. Asura reaches the creator in 277 seconds or a little under 5 minutes. Doing more conversions, we see that Asura was moving 2.8 billion times the speed of light. This would just back up the previous feat, but we have to take into consideration that Asura is getting slowed down by all the planets and stars being thrown at him, as well as the blast from the Chakravartan. Asura is able to reach the Chakravartan and completely destroy his avatar with one punch, confirming multi-galaxy AP for Asura. Asura fights against Chakravartan and their fight breaks through multiple dimensions with the Chakravartan taking on his true form, Chakravartan, the creator. The creator is so strong in this transformation that he's able to stop Asura's full power attack with just one finger and knock him out of his mantra form by just tapping his hand. Asura is able to gain strength through his rage increasing to the point where his base form is now able to keep up with the creator, and he eventually gains enough power to use one final punch that completely obliterates the creator, finally using every last drop of his wrath. Overall, Asura would scale to multiversal with MFTL plus speeds. In the end, Asura was able to get his vengeance because of the immeasurable limits of his wrath. What's up guys, it's Divine. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and tell me what you think in the comments. Tell me, who do you think can defeat Asura's wrath?